Okay, uh, welcome everyone to the May 12th iteration of the MicroProfile Live Hangout. Uh, today is a combination live hangout and working group discussion meeting. Uh, the meeting, a link to the meeting minutes are in the notes. If you're on the call, um, please go ahead and uh, add your name to the contributors list um, in the meeting minutes. And uh, this meeting is being recorded as well as the chat. So just be, be aware that the chat will be saved as well. Um, let's see here. So slide nine participants. So we're going to, I, I guess, make the official call here that MicroProfile 4.0 is going to be delayed uh, until Q3. Oh, I I'm sorry, I forgot to share my screen. Let me, let me, let me do that. Okay, there we go. Um, yeah, so we're, so we're going to go ahead and um, make the call that MicroProfile uh, 4.0 is going to be delayed um, because of the working group uh, creation. So for now, what we're going to do basically is say Q3. So I, I hope we can deliver that in, in Q3, um, not putting a time frame within Q3 at the moment. Um, so the two major items are um, uh, we are working on a working group pricing model um, that we're going to run by uh, the Eclipse Foundation, um, I hope this week, and uh, reaching out to potential working group members. So, um, you know, if you happen to be a vendor on this call um, or watching the recording, feel free to reach out to Kevin and I directly uh, if that is preferred. And um, let's see, what else do I want to cover in this regard? Uh, we, we do have uh, the release tracking for um, each of the specifications that are targeted for MicroProfile 4.0, no change there. And um, that is really it from a release perspective. Um, Emily, you had an item here. Yeah. That you wanted to bring up. Yeah. So basically, uh, this is a follow-on uh, conversation on the Google Group mailing list. Is uh, the question from Roberto? So basically, it's um, uh, also I know is uh, at the moment we cannot work out uh, the release date. For the fall, however, we should uh, give a heads up when we uh, when we like a worker group is nearly finished. We uh, like uh, set up a uh, we when we fix the time, we should give at least uh, like four weeks to the specs to tidy up the loose end. So this is what um, I'm um, uh, proposing. I would suggest to even give more than four weeks because yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it should be released before and you should do a candidate release and you may find things during candidate release uh, time. So four weeks um, in advance seems a bit uh, a bit little. So six to eight weeks is, is, is preferred. Right, six to eight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't have a, I think it makes sense what you said. Maybe yeah, so. So to make something clear, uh, one of the reasons why I was asking, I was not even asking for a, a, a particular date or a specific date, uh, because I know that's impossible, but I now see that we have John saying that the 442 was delayed until Q3, which I think that's uh, reasonable. What I want is us, for us is to agree on a, on a message that uh, we're going to say how much was delayed, because I, I, I think that just saying Oh, 4.0 was delayed without anything else. I think that's a bad message that we're passing on to the community. And we should at least give some kind of uh, estimation or prediction when 4.0 might get released. Even if that doesn't work, then at least we can then update and say, oh, we're not able to comply with this date again. And I, I mean, I know that's disappointing, but I also think that uh, just providing a blog post or a, or a message which is saying, oh, we are delayed, but we have no idea when something's going to go up. It's also a bad message. Yeah. So, Roberto, let me go into this. Um, 
I think you agreed to volunteer to write that draft for the blog. And um, if you use the microprofile uh, marketing drive on their content that is added into the, the thread and it starts something, I am extremely happy to, um, you know, just edit and help a little bit on that. We need something short and sweet that will bring links and a little summary of what is happening and we can adjust it and continue to, the plan is to push this block as a reminder every other week or so, so that anyone that is not interested in the conversations about the charter and working group can you still know that we have the release coming up and that is important and we are having an update and it's going through media and it's a constant. So are you okay with that? Because if it is, just submit a get ticket and let's start on it. There is no need to delay. We are saying plus one, we need a clear message. No, I can, I can, I can write a, a draft uh, blog post. Uh, again, I just wanted to, for us to agree on, uh, on at least passing a message on when we think that we might have a 4.0, even if that may not happen. Sometimes. Uh, yes, Sometimes. I mean, I think, I think that that's reasonable. Uh, I just didn't want to write something without any uh, expectation, you know. Yeah, yeah. Q3 is great, and we can adjust it. We will honor, uh, honor what is we're doing and clarify it, we can update the blog. So if you can start that, just submit it and pull me in via the Git, and we're happy, like if we can get it done and out this week. Roberto, very simple. Simplifying the message is so much more complex than around the, writing a Bible, that would be great. So just go for it. And I'm happy to, to be your backup and editor. I have also an, a little comment on that period that we set four weeks up front or even more. Um, but since we are delaying, I don't think there will be any problem because we should be ready by now, more or less, to have a release. So I don't see the reason why we should have a big delay or a big wait time uh, before we can do a release because everything should be ready mm -hmm. already. Yeah, yeah but so, you also know that if you give people more time, then they will use it and start with new stuff. Yeah, just so people are aware, we won't actually know the date four weeks in advance how this would work is we would know the date and then you would take four weeks because we don't have any ability to predict the exact date that things would be approved yep so we could tell you when they're approved and then you could take four weeks to, to wrap things up mm -hmm. But and this thing, just just managing expectations, right? Mm -hmm. That's what the blog needs to do: manage expectations for those. Well, I'm just talking about the people yeah. in this call that are requesting yeah. for four weeks. So we yeah. would not have the ability to predict four weeks in advance of the actual approval. We would be able to tell you that when the approval happens, and then you could take four weeks. And uh, Heiko was saying four weeks is a bit too 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 too, too low. Maybe six weeks. Well, here's the thing. I, I think you can do candidate releases regardless, right? So, it, you know, if, if you want to begin locking down the current releases um, targeting 4.0, you can create candidate releases of those today. We just can't release them. Yeah, yeah. So it's a, it's a kind of fine cut. Like, um, like uh, some spec, like uh, we want to get an issue uh, in, for example. And then it's, uh, because it's delayed, uh, I will take on two issues. And, um, and some issues it takes a long, but I really want to get it in. And uh, if I have, uh, like, uh, now I have a deadline, like, uh, you tell me, like, uh, four weeks in advance, I, I say, okay, I, I need to discope this issue, for example. And I do the golden path. And um, so this is basically the, the reason for this kind of four weeks in advance uh, notice period so yeah. we can tidy up things well I'm, I'm not i'm not sure about something which was being mentioned which is i at least for I, what i what i what i've seen so far is uh, the work kind of became a little bit stale because people are just waiting about what's going to happen over here so uh, i at least from my perspective uh the work that is being the what that should have been done for 4.0 it's kind of stale uh, so it's not kind of, I don't think we are in the state where we'll say, oh, for this year, we are done with the working group so we can release because most of the work is done. I, I just think that we're not doing, uh, that much work 
uh, on the spec side and API side. I'm not sure what's the rest of the, uh, uh, the opinion of the rest of the people, but I think there's going to, we're going to have a lot of stuff to do after this is done. You know, this conversation brought me um, last week to think about also the third and final release for 2020. And we are only thinking about the release 4.0, another one that we usually send off in October, sometime in October. And I think it is our job, given that now we're going to use that space. Um, um, it, it, it might be later in Q3, if it's later in Q3, how close is it for the third release? And is it, is it of any value for us to assume that we will have it like nothing has happened? Is, is something important for us to analyze the future release of this year? There are three releases, and this is the time for us to consider, do we really need that 4.1 or something release? Can we, would it be valuable when 4.0 will not have enough testing and feedback. Is this, you know, this is something that is so important for this community to analyze. Well, I think I, I, I think Roberto kind of had a question on the or a question on the table about, um, you know, what do other people think about um, if I'm going to paraphrase Roberto and correct me if I'm wrong about continuing um, work on the existing specs. Um, and, and when to kind of stop, um, well, I didn't want to say that. Continue well, uh, let me, let me, work. let me, let me try to clarify. Sorry, let me not clarify. So my, my perspective, at least what I feel from the spec that I'm working on is that ever since we announced that we couldn't release and, uh, and we were going, we're going to delay micro profile for the zero, the work kind of stale a little bit. So people start contributing, okay. people stop doing stuff. I'm not saying that stop completely, but the cadence kind of dropped down. So when we're saying that uh, when we have this, this thing and uh, when we have a working group and then we can release 4.0 where we pretty much have everything done, I don't believe that's going to be the case. So what about the other spec uh, folks on the call? Is this, is this um, happening across the specs? Anyone? Bueller? Yeah, at least at the halt. So we didn't really finish it yet. So, and we are not prioritizing. We should have a call next week to sync. But uh, yeah, we still have some things to do. So I think um, I'm, I'm going to read something into that, I guess. Um, there's a set amount of work to do um, within you know, the GitHub issues. And there's a sufficient amount of time to get that done. And there's no forcing function. As soon as we have a forcing function, the work will get done. That's how I'm kind of reading into this. And it's, it's not, it, well, and it's not a, it's, it's not a criticism, right? Um, it, it, at all, because we all have other responsibilities within our day jobs. So, um, but it's, it sounds like um, once we have some time frame. I think maybe this is why Emily is asking for a decent heads up, because once we have a forcing function, people will realize, well, maybe we should start prioritizing this work. Mm -hmm. um, so I would say if you, if you need a date, and I'm just going to pull this out of, my, out, of, out of thin air, I would say if, if you're concerned about wanting a significant amount of heads up, then you need to be ready to release by the end of July if you aren't, there's a pretty good chance that you're the one holding up the eventual release because you know what I mean? You know what I mean? So if you wait till we get a final approval and then tack on four to six weeks, you're the one tacking on four to six weeks that you are potentially not leveraging. So be leveraging what, it now. what about building on this and what Amelia said earlier and saying, okay, end of July is the deadline for O. This is sort of already the release built, but not released. And then every effort coming afterwards will go into a 4.1, which is then due in, in October. 
Mm -hmm. So that there is material for the October one and the other one will be ready once the working group uh, is created or, or um, whatever it's called. Heiko, now you are talking as an architect and the level of what comes next in meddling, helping expectations for the coders. So when Roberto and I get into that blog, if I were to read it, I want to know as a coder, what am I you know, what do I look forward to? I have 4.0 and then 4.1. And that is easy, easy to consume. What is everyone else thinking about this? Because I am not comfortable just talking about 4.0 in a blog and not mentioning the final release of 220 without a clear path. It's just brutally uh, inefficient. So are we actually going to do an October release? If we do 4.0 in September, are we going to release 4.1 in October? And that is my oh. question. I think it's a good idea to have it, to keep up with the three releases a year. Well, that, and I think, that, yeah. That, that, that's really an open question, right? This might be an odd year for releases, you know? Um, just so everyone's aware, we need to get a working group established and we need to get people legally signed up in the working group, you know? So uh, I can see two events on the logs. What's that? Leading here. Who spoke? I think that was Emerson, but I think maybe. Yeah, so it was my mistake. Okay. Yeah, anyway, so, uh, you know, what the, the 4 release has to be released through the specification process, which means there's a working group established and the members have signed. So <clears throat> what you would be requesting of an advance notice would be, can you tell me four to six weeks ahead of time of all the work group being formed and all the members signing up can four week four to six weeks ahead of time it's not really workable so no. so it's okay if you want to take four to six weeks after but there is no word advanced so for there to be advanced notice we should just pick a date where you should just be ready by and if you're not that's on you um, so like I said, I just made it up out of thin air, but I would say end of July would be the most optimistic date that I could imagine mm -hmm. us getting through any kind of process. That would be optimistic, right? Mm -hmm. It could easily go uh, further into Q3. July 31st uh, is a Friday, and it seems to me that we can add that date as the tentative for any coder working actively in the extensions. And we can add that day to the, to the, to the blog. I would just say, keep it in mind, you know? Yeah. Keep it in mind. And like, definitely do not stop working and then start working once we have all this wrapped up, because then mm -hmm. we'll be definitely adding, it sounds like four to six weeks on top of a date. Right. Yeah. And it's on okay. Friday. So. <clears throat> okay. So I, I kind of like to, you know, move off of this topic. I, I think we've got it there. Um, Roberto's going to write up a blog. If you, if you want someone to review the blog, feel free to, to, to just just reach out. Um, yeah, Roberto. Use, sure. Roberto, use the Get issue and pull out um, John and myself. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. Thank you. And then um, we have a soft date for end of July, um, which is optimistic. <laughs> yeah, I, I believe it's very optimistic. <laughs> I, 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 we have... But we, we're oh. moving away and we're still not talking about 4.1. 4. 4. And can we say this to be, to, be, to be determined if there will be a 4? In the blog, we should say to be determined if, if there will be a 4.1, given the circumstances of 220 work. If, if anyone else is not okay with that message, but, but, now. But before, well, so again, I don't know about our ability to predict 4.1 at all. Um, what, what I would say is that just to make sure everyone heard, we can release release candidates. So at the very at the very least, you could be releasing a release candidate at the end of July if there is no completely functional working group there yet, and re-release it again in August or September, if uh, you know when those come through. So if you need a forcing function, you have no restrictions to releasing a release candidate. Uh, yes. Okay. So um, that is is uh, I 
on the 4.1 release, I, I think we can reevaluate as we get closer to, to understanding um, the final draft um, of the working group charter, right? So it's a little bit too early to say much, uh, to say one way or the other um, for a 4.1 release in October, sorry. Okay, um, next topic. Uh, marketing. So we've got about uh, five or six minutes left. Um, Amelia, did you want to cover anything on, on marketing? Side. Yeah, oh, sorry. And the marketing side, John and I met yesterday. There is a, a video of the 45 minutes with Ryan and South Java Ruan. And the data is there. We pretty much um, have used the one of the threads on the forum about the working charter for the branding side. And it's very transparent. So just click on those things when you have the time. And Ryan, uh, do you have anything else to say? You are here. Usually uh, the inventory on the issues of the Git get revised every other day by uh, those active. So there is nothing else from my side. Um, John did a fantastic job with, um, we have five tickets that are related to what is happening in a working, shop, a working group um, that are related also to branding. And it's just great to have them um, as addition. Okay. Yeah, I, have um, no, I have nothing to add. There's no new tickets in, uh, in the get for marketing topics. Oh, my only ad is what I okay. ask Emily. If you are participating on today's Jakarta uh, Live, uh, Jakarta One Live, remember if you're talking about micro profile, it, you, we want that data. Usually you will want that data in the micro profile blog. In, there is a, a steps to follow so that the, the, the content that you work so hard to push today continues to live on and is easy and traceable, not only through the micro profile, but also to the Jakarta website. Both are automatic. Um, so remember to do that. Just, you know, scale and protect your time and investment on sessions. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to point out just a, um, I, I'm going to switch gears uh, here um, to the working group discussion. I don't know if we have a, a full half hour's worth of content. Um, I do want to point out a couple of things. Um, you can see I just added the link here to the, in, this has been in, in the meeting notes prior as well. So um, to the slide deck, that is the prospectus for other members that we're trying to recruit. Uh, what I'm looking for is um, quotes from the, uh, corporate members that just say, you know, extolling the virtues of micro profile, right? So um, just, just added this, I think, late yesterday or this morning, um, kind of a red hat one, so you can get a feel for, um, you know, a quote. You, you can see this in the Jakarta prospectus as well, right? So I'm hoping maybe Kevin from IBM or in, in Amelia from Tabak Tribe could, could kind of come up with a quote and just insert it there. And, um, and then as we re re recruit more members, we can fill this out more. My recommendation will be, this is amazing, but my recommendation will be in the future when we have new partners, for them to use the Git and submit their quotes on that. Right now we can do it organically, but scalable means that the new partners that might join and individuals can send us their quotes via the Git and say, hey, I am new, this is what I like, and just use the Git and have it like be automatic, arriving yep. to the tool. This will be for later, but right now, like John has done an amazing job on this that I only checked yesterday. And it's just like, I was so impressed. So FYI, John, I already told you. It's mostly copy and paste of the Jakarta I one. So I had somebody else's hat tip. Um, but, but anyway, regardless. Um, so I've started to fill out some of this. I'm gonna go through and continue to modify it. Um, so just, uh, I'll, I'll let you know when it's kind of in a decent form to, to go through a more full review. Um, okay. So that was the next one. Um, now, if we go to the working group uh, charter proposal, uh, there's only a couple comments left. So we don't have a whole lot in terms of the charter wording until we have um, a pricing structure. So the comments that we have left, um, sorry, I'm scrolling down here. Um, 
there were some modifications of the wording around the committer community voting. So um, quick summary, um, the current thinking around committer representation in the voting structure of the working group is that the working group as a whole votes and then the result of that vote becomes a committer member vote, um, a, a single vote for um, the overall working group. So whatever the working group is voting on. And the idea is to give broad representation across all the committers. Um, so we were working on the wording a little bit um, and it's like, well, is it a plus one, a minus one? What if, you know, and then I started thinking, well, what if somebody abstains? That's a zero, right? So all I did um, here is I just reworded this a little bit. Um, so the community committer vote would be a simple majority of those voting. And the wording I added was a minimum of at least three individual committer votes is required for the community vote to be recorded. So um, that gets rid of the plus ones, minus ones, um, et cetera. And we just have simple majority. So unless there's any, any thoughts about that, I can resolve that. I, yeah, I like that wording. Better. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. much better. Let me go ahead and resolve that. Um, I, I have a question mm -hmm. about that though. Mm -hmm. um, um, something that Edwin brought up on last call when we talked about new companies being invited as guests. We said that it will not be dictated by the corporate members, members or the steering committee vote, but it will, be, it will follow the protocol of the community as a whole to vote. There are some things that the steering committee will only vote that is not the same vote as the entire community the contributors and my idea is that we need something we cannot list all the aspects but we can list at least examples or something that clarifies when a community a community vote occurs and what is the difference between the corporate votes and and between the you know not corporate but this mm -hmm. the steering um do you see what i mean it's like it's confusing yeah so way. so here's the way i would actually look at it in the reverse Okay. Where here's the things that the, via the charter definition, the way we have it defined, the things that we vote on um, are going to be uh, modifying the charter itself and the spec creation and spec release stages of the EFSP. Two things. So then let's write those up because there are less there. than they what the community there. will vote. The last <laughs> bullet under <laughs> composition. Specification process, process votes and votes to amend the charter would fall under this process. That's perfect. I, I, it's a specific, yep. it's, um, the intent it, is, it, yeah, the intent is that all of the votes would be just simply following the Eclipse development process. Yeah. Can we write that up? That we currently do. It, it doesn't have, we, we, we don't have to write that up because anything that's not listed here under that bullet just falls under community vote. Yeah, that is what I mean. Like, but we don't, I, what I see is that we didn't have that here. No, we don't have to write it up. My point is, by the fact that it's not included here, it defaults to community vote. But you are assuming that someone no. new to MicroProfile understand this. And I am saying that this is a sort of proof for the new working group. And as a newcomer, if I didn't was one of the creators of, of MicroProfile, I will want to know ahead of time before going to videos and understanding all this. You expect me as a newcomer to know this stuff or do, where do I find it? This well, is they won't typically uh -huh. go to the charter to figure that out. I, I think yeah. where they might go is look at our wiki with our processes that are defined there. Right. So specifically, you mentioned something early, which was there are scenarios where the steering committee would vote without the community. That's not the case. That hasn't been defined in this at all. There's the Eclipse development process vote, and then this process, both of them still involve a community vote. One is only a community vote, one is a community vote plus a uh, corporate member vote. And uh, so there isn't a corporate member vote only scenario. Yeah, and uh, apologies for that. It's like a steering um, a specification committee. So even ourselves, the message needs to be clear and it's not fully clear here. I am saying 
can we add the two versions where the, you know, it, the community will not be welcome or allowed to vote? Because we have the data, so why are we hiding it? Do we expect this to change? And if so, why so? And I'm just being there, I am thinking about those newcomers that will come and corporations that will come and will want to know everything by reading the charter. Because lowering the debt and clarifying and simplifying the message matters. And I see these documents as one of the sources of, of truth that we will have under the, under the website. It's easy, downloadable, easy to click, easy to go, and under the get also. I'll be honest, I, I still don't see the problem. Well, anyone else, if no one else see what I see, then it's so fine. Um, you know, I can be convinced otherwise. However, I am skeptical that this will suffice for newcomers. My guess is that newcomers are not even going to look at the working group charter. That's why I don't think that we have to spell everything out in the charter. That, that, that's my view. Yeah, at, at least the committers or the individual people will not look at this, no. Right, they'll, they'll look at what does it take to become a committer, they'll look at the processes that we use for that. So um, then, so, so Kevin and Rudy, so then we will have a much more uh, docu splattered co documentation under our processes, under the GET, yeah, the that, wiki. Yes. Okay, so if that's the case, that's so fantastic because we can add a link to the finalized charter and then that. I, it just needs to be somewhere where we can um, put it into yes. the website. And it will, that covers my, my, my issues with- Okay, good. Cause that, yeah, because that's kind of what we did, you know, with Jakarta EE too, is that we, right. you know, you only define it to a certain level of detail. And then the next level of detail is documented as part of the, you know, the individual group and more of like an operations guide. Yeah, I like it. A cookbook. I would call it the cookbook of microprofile for that a document. Yeah. All right, so I'm gonna move on to the next one. This is the only other comment um, until we get down into pricing and stuff, which is a, a conversation that we'll have to have a little bit later. Um, but I had kind of an AI from the last working group call to look at what, you know, what does it mean to be in good standing? Like, what, what if you're not in good standing? Well, it's actually kind of spelled out right here. And I did look at the bylaws and stuff like that. And really, it just, it, it says, um, a representative uh, shall be in good standing and thus eligible to vote. So basically, it means if you're not in good standing, you can't, you're not eligible to vote. At the end of the day, that's what it means. So I don't think we need to do anything specific here. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to resolve this after doing a little bit of uh, R&D. Yeah, I think what we do need to pin down is what we consider to be an official meeting that you would need to attend. And if not, you would risk losing your good standing. So I think that is, that is, you know, here, uh, let's see, how do I say this? We don't, I don't even think under Jakarta, you specify what's the official meeting you state that there's that you have to make a certain number of meetings and then outside of the charter you you know we, we agreed well let's meet once a week for jakarta steering and i think that's similar here it's um it's outside of the charter where we say well we're going to meet maybe once every other week or whatever we decide on um outside of the charter and it would basically be this meeting and yeah, I, yeah, I don't mean that in the charter we have to define the schedule. When we put this in practice, we would have, in order for us to be able to uh, even yeah. enforce good standing, we would have to identify what we think are the official meetings, right? I agree with that entirely. And if that's the every other Tuesday meeting, then you could effectively miss two months worth of, you would effectively miss, you know, uh, eight weeks versus uh, of meetings, you know, eight calendar weeks before you would lose any kind of issue, run into any issue. Yeah. Yeah, here, here uh, it says you have to make uh, three of the last four, I believe. Sorry, I'm going from memory. So, yeah, right. you said that we will use the directors um, or board of directors um, attendees last time, last, last week. I think you copy paste and yeah. went to it, John. And, and so you could, you know, 
assign proxies for your organization and all that, right? I mean, that's that's all kind of, I think, well understood, at least for the people that kind of attend some of the other meetings. Um, you know, your organization can um, assign a proxy saying so-and-so is going to vote, you know, be, be my representative for today. Um, as an organization. So, um, and, and basically that's it. Um, I, let me say something on this. I don't think mm -hmm. it's, it's necessary to say someone and someone will come. We will continue with the processes of having the contributors that attend the meetings write up their names, but that will be enforced. So that if you forget to write it, at least there is a video that proves that you were there and it can be fixed. Asking everyone to submit uh, an update on attendance is bothersome and ineffective and no long term will add us to be disciplined on it. So I'm saying let's keep what it works right now. Keep it as a good faith that everyone will honor, you know, write in their own names and things like that. Write the same thing, no, no changes. Because if we add something else as a task, we're setting ourselves to failure. And policing this will not work. Well, this, this meeting is going to change. Um, it's going to change in that we have to be much more diligent about publishing the agenda ahead of time and yes. more diligent about our note taking and capturing uh, what was. So it will no longer be, it's everyone's shared responsibility. Um, mm -hmm. It'll be somebody's responsibility. Maybe it's me, maybe it's Kevin, whoever, right? Um, mm -hmm. But, um, you know, we'll, we'll have to have someone make sure that we capture all the notes and then have the notes approved um, after, after uh, you know, at the next meeting. Right, so we are going to be changing the way we conduct ourselves a little bit um, because uh, it's kind of well, it, it, it's required um, under you know vendor neutrality, making sure that ha we have everything more official. Um, mm -hmm. So anyway, that's well, that's. But I, have a, sorry, I, I have a quick question on these meetings. A quick uh, observation. Uh, like uh, I also suggest, uh, since like uh, this, uh, we mandate the um, meeting participation. I think it's the kind of unfair for the European people because this is a kind of yeah, it's okay for USA based in Europe. Like uh, it's at eight o'clock in the evening and etc. The quite uh, I think is if someone want to do this for their job and etc. It's pretty inconvenient. Maybe we should uh, also revisit uh, to set up a better time for. And we uh, can, can, Emily, well, we can, can do that because we have also people in Africa and Asia and, and, and you know, sometimes Kenji joins, even though it's super late. And we cannot cater to one specific uh, well, content without the disregarding others. So uh, you see. Well, I should have, we should have tried. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give a, a fairly controversial statement here. <laughs> that statement it. is, is that the timing has to be weighted um, toward allowing the voting members to attend, right? Because uh, that's what makes the meeting official. Yeah. So, and, and I, I know that goes counter to our culture, um, but I think it's, it's probably what we're going to have to do. Um, otherwise, we won't have quorum. Yeah, but the, the, and one thing that I need to remember, everyone, is that on Tuesdays, from nine and eight in the morning to ten thirty, like we have there, there's like every partner here has the steering, PNC, Jakarta calls. So you know, if we want to keep it on the same day, not a Monday or a Friday, um, you know, it seems you know changing it to another day, like having the doodle pool. I mean, this is complicated. Uh, I understand Emily's feedback. Um, but we have not seen a major drop on, you know, it's some of, we need to know who has a problem with this. Um, I know that Andro has it and a few other European uh, microprofilers, but we want to hear more from them and instead of just sacking our, on ourselves that we always show up. Let me yeah, just, throw, I, yeah. Oh. Go for it, yeah, let me just throw out a quick comment that we, you know, we don't necessarily, there is no requirement that we have a bi-weekly meeting of the working group that's an official, there must be quorum meeting that would cause someone to lose standing if they didn't attend one of them. You know, because it's right now, it's written three, you must three out of four, right? That's a pretty high attendance rate. Mm -hmm. uh, 
that's aggressively high attendance rate. Uh, that's what it is for Jakarta, by the way. Uh, yeah. Just an FYI. I don't think we're enforcing it, by the way. Hold on, hold on. I hadn't finished the thought. So, you know, it is possible that we would set up, we could potentially set up a quarterly official working group meeting and the rest of the meetings are just regular community meetings. Community meetings. That would be amazing. That's, That's fantastic. Let's do that. You know, and then in which case you must attend two you know, out of three. Well, out no, you four. have to attend three of the four quarterly working group meetings mm -hmm. or not be in good standing, right? And we can keep the same hour that we have now. It's only that at that time. Can we do that? Well, it, it would better. be whatever it would probably be doodle poll based and, you know, that kind of thing, right? Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, so just throwing that out that we do not have mm -hmm. to make a Tuesday call the official I, lose your vote meeting. It could I, I, totally. I love it. Anyone doesn't love it. John, I didn't hear what you said. I, I hate the idea. Absolutely can't stand it. No, I'm kidding. I, I, no, I like it. No, no, it's 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 absolutely correct in my opinion. So it might be that every fourth meeting of this could be a steering committee edition, right? Or however you want to do it. So um, I'm, 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 I'm open to it. Then be something different about those quarterly meetings. Is that just business as usual for the meetings? Because that will or will be will be discussing something else then. Well, it's, it, it might oh, be that, uh, go ahead, Kevin. I think it was you, Kevin. Yeah, I'll, I'll give you a, one example of one thing that we just did with um, the Jakarta E working group is we kind of had a um, uh, self-analysis type thing. You know, how, how did we do in the last quarter? What are our plans for the next quarter type thing? So maybe that's a topic that we would do during a steering committee call instead of on a weekly call mm -hmm. just to throw out an idea right it could be budget discussions it could, it could be, that. be yes so it's it's those things i i think um that we um i personally would, would, would like to maintain kind of this approach as much as possible but there are going to have to be some cadence of more formality so. Okay, so so if we agree on the quarterly or whatever time, can we then leave the minutes? We will need two minutes, one that is uh, um, formal and one that is like the one that we have now. So we will create mm -hmm. two minutes and one will be added only by those associated with, you know, like maybe two, three people that can approve suggestions. And then this one will be open for anyone to help. That will, and if we keep the two, the bi-monthly calls, I think that will compromise and add the level that we want. I am afraid that if we change and withdraw the power the community has to feel ownership on calls, that it will set um, negative precedent to who is important and why someone is important just because it works for a company or whatever else. And I don't like anything that will establish leadership and that doesn't comply with being a facilitator. Facilitators being, bring people beside us and not behind us. Anything that restricts this balance of freedom cuts it. And we, I agree, we need two different things, but just taking this away and pushing it, can we, you know, just find a balance on here? Well, I mean, we, I, I think we should maybe discuss that outside of the context um, of this call in, in, the, in the group. Talk about, I think even starting now, we could begin talking about how we want to handle the meetings, how frequent. Now, this is going to be dependent on new members. That's only that's the only challenge, right? Um, there's members that we're going to have that are on this call to, to be a part of that discussion, potentially, right? So, um, but we'll have to see, right? Uh, maybe, I don't know, maybe, maybe it's too early. But I, I do want to um, kind of state one other thing is um, uh, we're going to try and meet with the Eclipse Foundation here shortly um, to kind of discuss a um, a fiscal proposal, um, you know, the, the working group, the working group fee proposal. Um, and I would also like to kind of get a sign off that we've, even without the, the, uh, the fee schedule, um, that we've kind of left phase one of the working group process and we're into phase two. 
um, which basically says, now we have to have, um, you know, some of our marketing materials um, available. So that, that is kind of a critical path right now is, is finishing up our um, marketing materials, but probably the bigger one is membership. Um, we have to uh, re recruit additional members. So um, are there any other comments around um, the working group charter? With this, uh, with the changes today, um, with the changes today, does, does this become version three today? Because we have tackled a few things um, and mostly most of the stuff is now budget related. If we want to call it version three, I'm okay with that. I, every single time I, we finish something that is huge and we move into the next uh, topic. That, was, that wasn't really huge, but, but that's yes. fine. I, I think it's huge. It, feel free, uh, feel free um, to, you know, to, to add version three um, yeah, I will. at the bottom. Mm -hmm. And um, I think for, I'm not sure what the next discussion is going to be around the working group charter um, specifically. So I'm not sure what the call is going to cover next week. It's going to depend on progress potentially of, of the um, working fee structure. Mm -hmm. So if, if we don't have any new content um, for next week, I might propose to drop next week's call, working group mm -hmm. discussion call unless there's topics that other people want to bring up. Something that we have not specified here is that for the budget, um, there needs to be some level of transparency. We have yet to speak about the budget. And when we reach out to current partners, um, we are dealing with blind, we are doing some research. I think David, Scott, Kevin, and John are part of that conversation to get an idea like you, what you guys have done with the other crew, crew drafts brought to these calls. And I think it's important for you to, for you for to summarize what is expected, what are the constraints, because we have an issue here. Hey, the playbook, you, the, I'll give you something else, like. And, and let me just say, we have reached out, personally I have done so, and not once of the corporate partners want to be pushed into play, pay to play. There are no replies, which means, which means there is a direct feedback for the Cliffs Foundation and for this community. And I don't, I don't appreciate us pushing to ourselves and to anyone else what something is not providing. Hold on, hold on. Feedback. I think you have a lot of questions which I could answer. Yes, go ahead now. Uh, so we need at least three people who agree to a fee structure to start the incubation process and be able to put up a charter with public pricing information. We need two more people after that in order to complete, the, to join the, the working group, in order to complete the process. So we need three to start and five to finish. So between the three and five is when the public pricing information will happen. What happens if we don't get, uh, the, we have three at the moment, Tommy Tribe, IBM and Red Hat. What happens well, if we, we did we, not- we, we, we tentatively have these people because we have to agree on at least a basic pricing structure All right. before that is even a milestone we have reached. So we have not yet reached the milestone of mm -hmm. having a working group charter uh, in incubation with three committed members. Mm -hmm. That is not where we're at yet. That was what, that's, the lat, that's the next step. Once we get that, then there will be a page on the eclipse.org website with the working group incubation charter, the pricing information, and at that point, we now have to get two more members in order to complete the process. Yep, so one step at a time. Yep. There's, um, for these two more, two more members, and that's right, it's, um, I mean, have we, what's, what's our like plan? Like uh, to approach Payara, Oracle, or Fujisu? I think the approach. Yes, we, we, obviously that would be the, the case uh, that we would attempt. I mean, we know we do have, you know, uh, Ed here on the call. I'm sure this is uh, interest, right? There is. So, you know, obviously we, we have to make something that 
is attractive to people. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's the challenge. We've already started to reach out to other potential members. And there is no feedback, by the way, um, on that. You know what, like when, while I was writing those emails. Well, uh, we, we, we just started. And yeah. people have to go through internal discussions. So I, I just take it a little. And, yeah, and we, we have no fee structure agreed to yet. So mm -hmm. well, well, it's, a little, that, it's a little early to shoot for the five. Yes, I, I understand get, we this. Need get, we need to get three locked down at least. So, so what I understand, I understand this. But my question now, thanks guys for um, providing the perspective on the budget. What happens? Is it, I understand the three minimum, but is it the five minimum a requirement for all working groups under the Eclipse Foundation? Uh, or where does that number comes from? It is publicly documented and it is a requirement for all working groups. So there is no bandwidth for, if, to, if, if, if Microprofile doesn't get the five members as minimum, would it be totally go, go into a halt and never become an incubator project under the new charter? I think we're nowhere near that point yet. I wouldn't. Oh, but I like to think about all the what if? Well, I mean, you, you, you could say then, that, well, that is the case for every single working group, right? So every single working group has been able to achieve that. Those that are still working on it are working to achieve it. So we'll, we'll, let's just work forward. And I don't think that's going to be a problem. So then that means that if we're done and we have gathered the five minimum partners, we will be able to release MP4 sometime in Q3. But if no new two partners arrive, and we don't have them until December or later, we will continue to be under phase three. That, that, that part is something that we're trying to bring to the foundation as a discussion point. Okay. This is, these are the things that are not being talked about and I'm just bringing it to the clearance so that everyone knows and when they listen to this video, they are like, ah, that's what is happening, right? Yep. So I think because we don't, we don't add this data to the threats and because it's so much information coming that we do not know that we only discover when we are working with Paul from the Eclipse Foundation, who is the person dedicated to help us navigate this. Um, you know, there are some things that we're missing and what I'm asking is, can we, it's impossible to, to add, but can we delegate that information so that it gets to the forums, to the respective thread? Because this is so this, important. This is the meeting we have oh. to get that information out. And we only discovered it late last week to this week, right? Only discovered what? Like that we, if we don't get to the five, can we still release so, MP4? To, to be honest, we just discussed this yesterday. So, and we <laughs> have not brought it to the foundation yet. Okay, there so you go. They're, if they're listening in, they're hearing it for the first time and we haven't even, haven't even been able to present it to them. So that's part of the reason why yeah, we, we are not bringing everything up yet because we haven't had the chance to talk to anybody. It's wonderful. This is wonderful. Okay, so we see where it's happening on the spot, everyone. I'm very happy, by the way. <laughs> okay. I am, I am the one asking you? questions. I am the one asking questions and being like, a, like you know, what about X? And this, these are not hard questions. These are easy, easy questions for everyone to discover. Like, right all right we've got three minutes left um so depending on how this week goes um in terms of progress we may or may not continue to have uh the working group edition call if there are topics that you want to talk about um add them to the meeting minutes and, or or post something to the google group and then we can figure out uh, whether or not we need to have a meeting next week but right now I'm, I'm, I'm leaning towards probably not. All right, so uh, thanks everyone. Um, we will see you in either one or two weeks, the same uh, bat time, same bat channel. And uh, everyone uh, enjoy the rest of your two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks. Thanks so much everybody. Thank you, bye. Yeah, thanks.